Okay, so this is my peg bag. So I made it several years ago and um, there is a tutorial on how to make one on my website. Um, it's a Swedish peg bag, presumably started out in Sweden, but I've had it several years now. It sits out in the sun when my clothes are on the line. Um, so let's have a look. It's getting pretty old and starting to fall to bits. So you can see here it's pretty dilapidated. Uh, the inside of it's almost worn through. It's very faded from the sun. Uh, the clip on the top has actually snapped. It still holds, but um, really I'm in need of a new peg bag. So. Okay, so this is my return to sewing. After maybe four years, I haven't really done much sewing at all. Uh, time has come to make a new peg bag. So, the other one has fallen to bits. Uh, so I had to go onto my own website, follow my instructions, download the template, which I've printed out, stuck together. I've chosen my fabric with what I've got left, inside and outside fabric, and I have a little hook for the top of the peg bag so I can hook it on the line. So, all I need to do is cut out my fabric, stitch it together. How hard can it be? Let's go. Okay, so I've got my fabric folded and the template ready to place on the fold. So I'll pin this on here, move it up to the edge, I don't lose too much fabric. Too many pins in this just to stop it moving. And the base as well. My circle again, place it on the fold. Okay. Not my favourite scissors. Very fussy with my scissors. These sewing scissors are the best. They used to belong to my granny, who was a great sewer. She sewed all her life and they are her original scissors. So, have been sharpened several times, which makes a big difference. But they are my favourites. just realized since I stopped sewing was when I took up yoga because I no longer when I'm teaching I don't crawl around the floor like this so that's why maybe why my body got so stiff and now I'm doing yoga feel more flexible again good job now that I'm sewing again otherwise I might not have been able to crawl around the floor like this to cut my pieces out mm. yoga good base for sewing. Okay, that's one piece. And, uh, base. Other side, fold that neatly later. And now for the inside of the peg bag. So we need the same templates. Fabric. 
close to the edge. Nice. Trusty scissors. my two base pieces. I open them out to see them properly. So two circles for the inside and outside base and two main pieces for inside and outside. There we go. One more thing I need. I need a little hook to go on here. Last time, I just need a bit of a scrap. There we go. So the last time I used, so it was a denim bag, so I used the seam, a uh, piece of the seam from jeans, but not making sure I'm using jeans this time. But all I need is like a, a little piece to hold them. So I'll just, uh, Use the selvage here. And I'll just stitch that together like that, and that'll be to hang it. So, just a little strip of the outside fabric for that. All right, so I've got all my pieces cut. Now I've got to stitch them together. Okay, so my little strap, this is the first thing you need to do. You can use a piece of ribbon or, like I said, the, cut a little bit of the seam from an old pair of jeans. Um, I just have my strip of fabric, I just fabric, I just folded it and stitched it to hide, hide the rough edges. Um, so just loop this through your hook, like that. And then we're gonna pin the outside pieces, the main pieces together. So the outside, the pretty side of your fabric needs to be facing up and the inside fabric. So the, the right side of the fabrics are together because it will turn the other way out. So place them together so that the edges match. Don't worry if your cutting hasn't been perfect. Fabric is very forgiving. Um, now I need my pins. So the hook, very important, needs to be pinned in here. Now, you want it sticking out on the inside. So you need to pin it like this into place. I'm just gonna have it sticking out a little bit so I make sure it's secure. So then you want to pin around the edge, but not on the curved bit. So this bit, don't pin. So we're only stitching on the other sides, every other side. So all the way around, you want to pin. And that's where we're going to stitch around. So we're going to stitch all the sides together, except for the curved part. Don't, don't pin or stitch the curved parts together. Everything else, yes. So 
it's not the correct part. Good. Okay, that's all pinned and ready to stitch. Not the curved part. All right, so I'm going to sew around the edges that I pinned, so not the curved edge, all the other edges. So I'm just going to use uh, three quarters of an eighth, uh, sorry, three eighths of an inch seam. So just the edge of the fabric on the edge of the machine foot. That's what I usually do, forwards and back at the beginning. And come to the top part where the fabric is for hanging I'm just going to run the stitches over and back a few times just because that's where the pressure will be when you hang the peg bag on the line I just want a little extra strength there Turn it out and so there, there's my hanger there. Um, make sure you poke all the corners out. You can use your scissors just to poke the, the corners so that they're nice and sharp. Then and then just the same place that you stitched before. It's all around those edges, not the curved edge. Um, I'm just going to top stitch, so very close to the edge, just to secure it and make it look a bit neater and flatter. Probably should, if you are being good or you want an extra step you could iron this in between. I'm just going to kind of push it down with my fingers, it'll be right. I'm a practical not a perfectionist kind of girl when I'm sewing. Close at the beginning. Stitching is just very close to the edge, maybe it's like a, a three millimeters or a, an eighth of an inch. Helps keep the fabric flat and looks good as well.
stage one done. My outside piece is ready. Next part is folding this and stitching these two parts here. So I'm not going to go back to my pinning board. I'm just going to hold them together. I'll just put a, just one pin in there. And one pin in there. So I folded this in half with the right sides together and it's the two straight edges we're going to sew along. So just this part and this part. Sorry, that's where my pins are. <laughs> so just where those two pins are, these two straight edges is where I'm going to stitch now. Right. So back to my 3 eighths of an inch seam. So along the edge of the sewing foot. forget, like I just did, that your hook actually needs to be on the inside. So, pick on pick time. Oh gosh, I really haven't used this in a while. <laughs> Quick unpick has unpicked itself from... Hmm. Unpick. Okay, so when you stitch this bit, remember your hook needs to go down like this because you actually need your hook on the outside. Now, for the top part, you can just stitch up. That's why the instructions said that. Um, you can just stitch as far as the hook. It doesn't matter if there's a hole at the top. Um, where that'll come out rather than having it messy and they just stitch as far as the hook but not into the hook. Put all my bits and pieces back in. All right so that's better. Stitch that and that but with the hook inside. Now these two pieces are <coughs> stitched. So let me turn it the right way round. There we go. Let's just trim those edges. There we go. So starting to take shape. So we just need to add the bases now. Nearly done. Okay, so again you could go back to your to a flat space to pin if you need to. But what we're going to do is attach the bases. So you need to turn this inside out as best you can. So we want the bottom part of the outside fabric 
and the circle of your outside fabric. So what we're going to do is put those right sides together and pin all the way round. So I'm just going to do it here. Could do it on the ground, but too lazy to move. Just around it little by little. And let's see how good I made my template as to how well this circle fits. Almost pretty close. I reckon if I stretch that a little bit. And I like working with fabric, it's very forgiving. Perfect. All right. So around the circle of the base is now pinned, so I'm just going to stitch all the way around. Again, oh, there's my other carpet on. <laughs> So again, same seam along the edge of the presser foot or at three eighths of an inch. Doesn't matter where you start because it's a circle. So that's the outside fabric bottom stitch done. So now we need to do the inside. So again, keeping it all inside out, the circle we're going to pin. Um, this time you need to leave a gap. So we'll pin most of the way around, but you have to leave a gap big enough to turn the whole bag out. So I'm just going to go around, I've pinned on the seam because that's the tricky part, I don't want to leave that open. I'll just do a little bit more either, either side of the, of the seam. Now, okay, so I'm going to leave not quite half of the circle open, but um, almost half. Plenty of space for turning it out. Okay, and then again, stitch together with the three eighths of an inch seam or along the edge of your sewing foot. Oh, fabric flat. There we go. Yeah, just 
of the way. Go over the seam with the outer part. Should be able to turn this all inside out, the right way round, upside down, back to front. <laughs> okay, so that's what it, it's almost there, but we still have that last part to finish off. So the last of the inside bit. Now this is going to be inside out of the way so it doesn't need to look so pretty. So I'm just going to do this, maybe pin it a little bit. So you're just folding the edges in a little bit. So this is your inside base, well out of the way. It doesn't matter if it's not too pretty because you're never going to see it. So just whatever makes it secure so you don't have a hole in the bottom of your peg bag to lose your pegs. You don't want that. fold in this side but that's okay like I said it's inside nobody's gonna see if it's not perfect the last part stitch that inside bottom seam close so I'm just gonna just top stitch here where I've pinned ah dropped a pin your inside in. Have any loose threads you can trim those and just and there is one finished new peg bag. Alrighty so I have my old peg bag that's falling to bits and my nice new peg bag. Mini mouse fabric looks very nice so I can Oh my goodness. Very much fallen to bits. <laughs> and fill up my new peg bag with eggs having shaken all the dirt out. And the dust that accumulates in my peg bag as I leave it sitting on the line. So here's my new peg bag. Success! I had fun sewing. I haven't really done any sewing in a few years now. Uh, peg bag really needed replacing so saved me having to buy one when I have a box full of fabric and a sewing machine and 
a website that has patterns and tutorials that tells me how to make things. So it was quite fun um, going on my own website, downloading my own pattern and following my own tutorial. Good to know it works. Nice to know it. It's, um, instructions were nice and clear. I could follow them. So go and have a look. You could make yourself a peg bag like this too. It was nice and easy. I can guarantee that. Um, if you've got just a little bit of sewing knowledge and a sewing machine, you too could have a Swedish peg bag, peg bag like mine.